We are Mike and Taylor, and these are our dogs, Penny and Lucy. We sold our home and nearly everything we owned, moved aboard a 40-foot boat, and sailed from Seattle. This is the story of us making our way. Oh my God. Welcome back, friends. We just sailed from Costa Rica to Panama, and our first few days here have been filled with some of the clearest water we've ever seen, stunning beaches, and endless visits from Southern Hemisphere humpback whales who are here at Isla Seca's from Antarctica to raise their calves. But last night, all the magic came to a screeching halt. Oh man, for such a beautiful evening. Last night, this turned into a GD rodeo. And that was one of the worst nights of sleep we've had in a really long time. And, oh, I don't know. It just became extremely bouncy. And we woke up and we were really close to shore this morning. I think because of like the massive tides right now. And uh, I mean, we were almost in the surf break. Um, so we're making a sort of emergency, quite hasty exit here. Trying to find a better anchorage before this thunderstorm turns into whatever it's gonna be. So, a little frazzled. Sucks this water is the best we've ever seen, but Sketchy, sketchy ship. Oh good. This well, it's huge today too, which does not help. So we're just coming around the corner on this island. Um, I think we're gonna beat this big squall back here. It's kind of moving the other direction. So that's good. It was a little hectic getting out of there. But I just had a heart attack because we're driving and all of a sudden I could see the bottom like extremely clearly like it looked really shallow and I asked Mike how deep we were and it was 75 feet. That's the visibility. Unbelievable. <laughs> we do have to be careful coming in here. A lot of coral heads apparently. So I'll be up here helping us in. But this already is so much smoother than where we spent last night, so... <laughs> okay, we are anchored way more comfortable than where we were this morning and last night. Oh my god. Mike is just diving on the anchor because it's got really overcast, so it's very glary, so I can't quite see our anchor. So he's just going to go down to make sure that we're not on or near coral because there's a lot of that around here. So we're just doing a check. Good. <laughs> the only kind of bad part is that this is the direction that the squalls tend to come in. So if we get a big one, we got nothing protecting us from that. Otherwise, A plus. Five minutes later. And just like that, a squall moved in, bringing rain, thunder and lightning, and winds that turned our tranquil little anchorage into a bounce house for hours and hours and hours. After four months of cruising in the rainy season, these daily and unpredictable storms had started to become pretty draining for everybody on board.
But as always, we had no choice but to just deal with the discomfort, ride it out, and wait for the sea state to calm down. The next day, with the sun shining, we decided to go exploring underwater, and we were blown away by what we discovered. The sounds you hear through the awkward noise of the GoPro underwater are whales. These songs were so loud and so clear. We were sure that there was a pod right next to us, but we never saw one. But since it's now believed that some frequencies of whale songs can travel 10,000 miles underwater, that was no surprise. But whale sighting or not, this moment was incredible. because as soon as you go down, you can hear whales. Like a lot of whales, like talking to each other. So loud. So loud, like I had to come up to see if I could see them on the surface because, and I don't know if the GoPro picked it up because you never know, but like, it was really loud. <laughs> I know. I don't know what this, so that's what I was, Man, there's so many, like. And they can pick it up, I think, much farther than they can. Yeah. Later that afternoon, after clearing some debris from our anchor chain, we got more visits from these magical creatures. Baby's just the party in. Put this 
Jasper's son. No! Mike! We suddenly found ourselves surrounded by a playful and curious trio. Two adults and one baby. Unfortunately, the water clarity in this area was not great and we couldn't see them underwater, but it was still amazing to watch and swim with them from a distance. GoPro because I didn't know if I should film up top or down under the water. The clarity is not great here right now, so I was scared you weren't going to be able to see. But anyway, uh, we saw them come up right next to us. And then I looked over and I could see it going underneath Chandler and crossed from one side to the other, and they came up on the other side. I mean, I saw a humpback whale from underneath our dinghy today, so. Wow. Wow. Wow, that was so cool. Too bad the water's not clear. Cause... I know, it's so weird how like coming in here we had such incredible visibility, but... <sighs> wow. Okay, attempt number two. I think we're good. We almost ran aground there. <laughs> it's just sand, so it wouldn't have been you know, the end of the world, but <laughs> that surprised both of us. Our charts were actually not accurate. And it's just in time, I think, probably for our afternoon rainstorm. And we're not rolling as bad, so this is much more protected. So I think we're gonna spend two nights here, which will be really nice. There are some pros and cons here, though. So, pro, it's beautiful. And it's one of the only like protected anchorages we've really managed to find so far <laughs> in this part of Panama. Those are serious pros. Cons, it's hella expensive. It's like $100 a night to anchor here. Yeah, because of the park. And the other con, is that there are a lot of crocodiles on this island. I think it was one week ago, a crocodile killed a human man, I think right here, and ate him, so, you know. After we checked in, we decided to move once more to somewhere a little further away from the anchorage with Tito, the man-eating crocodile. Okay, wow, this is our, third anchor spot in one day. It's been a long day. But, 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 look at this. Look at this. Coiba National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and Marine Refuge. 
protecting 38 smaller islands and the large Coiba Island. Its history as a penal colony ironically kept access to this place extremely restricted, which allowed 80% of the island's resources to remain untouched by human contact. And it is now considered to be akin to the Galapagos in terms of its biodiversity, and it remains a stunning laboratory for scientific research. We woke up to sunshine with a side of passing drizzle and a ripping current. And with one full day to enjoy this beautiful spot, we were off to explore and make the absolute most of it. So we've moved a little bit away from where a four meter crocodile ate a man last week, but not very far away, <laughs> but we're a little far away. And there's tour boats with people snorkeling like right there. So we're gonna go for a snorkel and please wish us luck. But also, you know what's weird slash cool slash wild slash a little sad is that I think this is gonna be our last dive in the Pacific Ocean. Oh, weird. Yeah. That had not occurred to me. Uh, hasn't that ever occurred to you, man? Sir? No, Mr. Lebowski, it had not occurred to me. That had not occurred to us, dude. That had not occurred to us, dude. <laughs> wow, that is weird. Next time we dive, we'll be in the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this is it. This is our last hurrah in the Pacific. Wow. wow. So. Hopefully we don't die by crocodile today. That would be a bummer. That would be a real bummer. <laughs> Just when we were about to hop out of the water, we got a really special visit. The sea turtles we encountered in Mexico were always extremely skittish. So in all of our diving in the Pacific Ocean over the years, this was actually our first experience of getting to swim alongside these beautiful creatures. We 
We thought we had totally maxed ourselves out with these amazing firsts. And then, a white tip reef shark. Our first shark encounter in the ocean. We just saw our first shark. <laughs> you got out real quick. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, we were so back to the dinghy to begin with, but yeah, I was like, you know what, it's probably time. The biz is not, it's not great. awesome. And so, so I just cool. didn't want to push. I don't know, but holy shit! God, uh, sea turtles and sharks? I swear <laughs> two sea turtles. <laughs> pretty epic snorkeling. We weren't even in for that long or we didn't even cover that much ground. Um, but there's so much life here. I mean, this, this area is like insanely beautiful. The other cool thing is that today happens to be our wedding anniversary. It's eight years today, which is kind of nuts. And so um, we've got to be in bed pretty early because we have an early start tomorrow, but I think we're gonna try to make some tuna sushi, which we've never done before. Overall, a great day, a nice last sort of cruising day in the Pacific Ocean. Making sushi is actually really hard. <laughs> it's really hard, uh, especially if you don't have sticky rice and the kind you made. It doesn't really work out. But it's an ugly pile. It's gonna taste so good. so much for watching and be sure to join us next time I think the plan is to be on the road at 2 a.m. and we are gonna round Punta Mala as we take on the infamous Punta Mala we pull in to Panama City where we prepare to transit the canal These islands just look like chia pets. You guys remember chia pets? <laughs> Back here live at the waterfront village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right, you're great zombie. <laughs> I love turtles.